Some incredible research has just come out that evidently shows that a chemical that is found in shampoos, cosmetics, and various other things may be the seventh leading cause of death, or even significantly worse. So we're gonna find out how to avoid this chemical and how to live potentially a healthier, happier life as a result of avoiding it. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. Could it be that this chemical, this endocrine disruptor called phthalate or phthalates, could it be that these are increasing people's chances of death, increasing chances of depression, anxiety, and various other diseases? Right now, actually just yesterday, a study came out and notice what it showed, phthalates and mortality. Research reported in the journal Environmental Pollution reveals that approximately 90 to 107,000 people age 55 to 64 may die every year from phthalates. Now what's incredible about this, this is just a 10 year period of human lifespan and they're saying potentially near 100,000 people may die just within that 10 year lifespan. So we're not talking about everybody else from children to people who are 100 plus. We're looking at this group of people. Now you say, Chad, you said that it may be the seventh leading cause of death. It actually may be worse, but let's just go with the numbers right there and say people only die from you know this age, 55 to 64. But look at the leading causes of death. This is from the official CDC website. This is not including COVID, but historically uh, of heart disease, 659,000 people die every year, cancer, 599,000, accidents, 173,000, chronic lower respiratory diseases, 156,000, stroke, 150,000, Alzheimer's disease, 121,000, and diabetes, 87,000. So couched right between Alzheimer's disease and diabetes, you would have the number seventh leading cause of death be phthalates, this chemical that's found in many shampoos, many plastics, and various other things. And we're gonna talk about what it's in, and we're gonna talk about how to avoid that, and some of the other diseases that you might come down, or other diseases that might be exacerbated by this chemical. So you might be wondering, what on earth are phthalates used for? Well, it turns out that one of the main reasons that it's used in so many components is because it makes things like plastic, basically more moldable, malleable, flexible, or even durable. You say, okay, great, it works for that, but it turns out that it's an endocrine disruptor. Well, what is that? Endocrine disrupting chemicals are substances that can occur naturally, but often are human-made chemicals that may negatively impact our bodies and our hormone system. Research has shown that they may be detrimental to human reproduction, immune function, and neurological function. Well, let's look at specifically breast cancer, one of the most feared cancers in women. Research reported in the journal Environmental Health Perspective showed that women who had higher concentrations of phthalate, a specific kind, had higher levels of breast cancer. What about prostate cancer? Research in the journal Environmental Research reveals that phthalates, different versions of it, were associated with higher levels of prostate cancer in obese men. So could it be that many of the cancer deaths that are tacked up in the cancer category may stem from what? Phthalates. So this may be worse than we even realize. But once again, going back to the numbers, if something like 100 plus thousand people between the ages of 55 to 64 die of this every year, this may be significantly higher than the seventh leading cause of death. If you added in people from 65 to 75 or you know 65 and up and downward past the 55 age, who knows? This could be the second, third, fourth leading cause of death in America today, but it turns out that it probably is not as bad in places like Europe. Now the question is, why not? Well, it turns out that phthalates were outlawed in Europe. Europe is a little more progressive when it comes to getting rid of chemicals that have been shown to be detrimental to people's health. And so how nice for the Europeans, not so much for Americans that they've, they, we've known for years that this has potentially lethal, deadly, or maybe not even deadly, but just traumatic effects on humans throughout their lifespan. 
but we haven't gotten rid of it yet. One of the other factors is what might it do to your cognition or to, to your mental health? Phthalates and depression. In the journal Science of the Total Environment, researchers looked at concentrations of a phthalate called DEHP and its connection to depression. And it turned out that it increased the chances of depression by an average of 92% in the elderly people who were studied. And some research has also come out looking at young ladies, young girls, and saw that it increased the, their level of anxiety. One of the ways that they test to see the quantities of this substance in someone's body is by testing the excretion of it through their urine. So they look at the urine, they test the urine, they look at what levels that the individuals have of phthalates, and that gives them an indication of how much they have in their bodies. Research has shown an association between phthalates and asthma, eczema, and altered male genitalia development in children. So this is one of the things that we've known for some time. This is not like something we just figured out yesterday. Now we just found out that it may be one of the leading causes of death. We knew that it could negatively impact. We knew that it could mess with the genitalia of little boys. So this is something you think we would have like got rid of years ago, but it's still something that is legal in the United States. And that's why you want to learn to avoid the substances that contain it. The studies we've all looked at so far have been human studies. I don't put as much stock in rodent studies or animal studies, but they have found that it increased the chances of lupus and other autoimmune problems. And this makes sense because it negatively impacts your hormones. So this just kind of makes sense. So what are some of the products that have it so that we can avoid it? Well, number one, we've already talked about shampoos and conditioners. So as you're taking a shower or as you're bathing, you are putting this on your hair, it's going all over your face. And one of the main aspects of it may be that you're simply breathing it in as it is evaporating in the air. Secondarily, maybe it is going in through the skin. Some of the other products that have it are things like hairspray and deodorant. Also things like cosmetics and makeup. One of the things that it's found in very often would be fingernail polish. From what I understand, it kind of keeps it from maybe cracking or splitting. So it just kind of keeps it together better. And so that's another thing to consider. You may find it also in your laundry detergents. And so then you may be wearing this just as you go through the day. And another one is plastic food containers. Now you probably know that you should not stick in a microwave or warm up food in a plastic container in general. That's just not a good idea. Not only do you have the phthalates, you have the BPA and some of them, some of them don't have it. And so number one, it'd be good to avoid them altogether, the ones that contain it in the first place, but you simply probably don't want to warm your food in a plastic container. And the last one that I'm going to talk about is plastic toys. These are something that your children may be playing with all the time. And so they may be taking up more and more of this throughout the course of their life. So maybe having toys that are not filled with, uh, you know, plastic junk, you might be better off or finding out if the toy manufacturer uses phthalates in the, in the production of these materials. So this is heavy stuff. If this is one of the leading causes of death in America, I think number one, this should be outlawed. This, this just should not be something that is nearly ubiquitous in the society around us. So what are some ways we can find things? Well, you have certain companies that I appreciate that they choose not to use these. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a list of some of the things down in the description, have some affiliate links down there. You can check that out. It helps you to give you an idea. I mean, one of the companies, you know, often things like lip balm, may have it in there. So you're putting it on your lips over and over and over. And you don't just put it on your lips often, you're putting it on cracked and chapped lips. And so think of how much more you're absorbing at that point. That's, I, I, I'm not funded by them at all, but uh, Burt's Bees is a company that simply doesn't use them in their products. Often the products will say no phthalates right on them. Those are obviously, they're probably going to be a little more expensive because you know, cheap brands just use the chemicals that are all over the place. I'll tell you what, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you think about phthalates? Are there some brands that you use that you know do not have them? And uh, if you have any comments, share them down below in the comment section. If there's any 
video that you want me to look into, any research you want me to study out, please let me know down in the comments section. I would love to study some of the things that you have that you have questions about. So if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications, share it with a friend. God bless and have a fantastic day.